Invitational number one, IMG2. With me is Kaldi, and we are on to the fourth match of today. Thus far, we've had three amazing matches between our four players, Kalento, Shadowy, Tom, and Chaoshen. We just saw Kalento do a reverse all kill, or actually, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Anyway, it was 3-2 in the end. Really close series. Uh, Kalento over Tom. And now we're going to be seeing Shadowy versus Chaoshen. And a uh, really good matchup between these two players. Shadowy obviously trying to make a name for himself in the Chinese scene. And uh, for Chaoshen, he's kind of a Chinese cult hero, like we mentioned before. Able to take several games off the Americans in the uh, China versus America Championships. And uh, just a really smart guy. Very good in math. And I think he's working on getting... Um, going to graduate school uh, in the field of mathematics, if I'm not mistaken. In any case, we are going to be looking at Shadowy's decks right away. And it's going to be uh, looking... Whoa. It's the Acro... Acro Freeze Mage? Right, yeah, the Acro uh, Freeze Mage. Yeah, this is a freeze, new... Freeze and Patron, or what? Yeah, wow. Freeze... Pr uh, yeah, Control... Priest and uh, Patron Warrior, it seems like. Yeah, so this is a new variant of Mage that's been a bit on the ladder. Uh, I've seen on NA as well. Kind of like uh, using the Ice... This is a deck that actually was around, I think, a, like a year and a half ago. <laughs> it was uh, kind of an old school deck that people are bringing back. Basically using the Ice Block offensively. Essentially saying that uh, you cannot race me, I will kill you first because of that Ice Block. And also has the uh, Freeze elements in it as well. Alright, so uh, taking a look at Chaoshen's deck now, decks now, excuse me. Uh, first we have the Shaman, which is uh, a mech Shaman with the uh, Lepernomes in there as well as Fell Reavers. Uh, next on the list have uh, a Face Hunter with the Argent Horse Riders rather than the Wolf Riders. And uh, lastly going to be having uh, a standard Oil Rogue, it seems, as we see uh, Shadowy come back on the screen. What do you think about these three decks for both of these players? I think it's very uh, crazy that he's going to go for the uh, Agro Freeze. Apparently, from talking to Shantel, he, he talked about this uh, playing against this. You feel like you're way ahead, you've already won. This is seems so weak until you lose. Right. I know exactly so that feeling. I know exactly what you're talking about. I've been in the exact same spot. You feel like you're winning the game, you're head on board, you're head on everything. Then all of a sudden they use a, uh, they put an ice block up, they use a frost nova, and then you're dead. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's pretty funny. It's a pretty funny deck and I'm pretty excited to see it here. Yeah, um, another thing to talk about is the... Uh, I, I kind of didn't like all of uh, uh no, shadowy deck here. So, uh, I mean, he was playing. Uh, it's, it's just a bit rough here. Uh, if we talk about this, but it, yeah, it is Tiaoshen with the uh, the Mac Mac uh, Shaman, and he skipped the truck and skipped the totem golem. Like, I I, I can understand skipping the truck potentially for Lepernome, but skipping the totem golem just feels weak to me. Yeah, I mean that's kind of his been his uh, weak point, I would say. Uh, overall, he's a very good in-game decision maker, I believe, um, and we saw him just play Grim Patron immaculately uh, against the Americans in that team match. But um, the reason why he fell in the BlizzCon qualifiers in those China Championships, even though he had a pretty easy road being one of the top eight point getters going in, was that he brought, I would say, subpar decks. Basically, a lot of aggro decks to, I think, throw his opponents off. You know, many, many players probably didn't expect him to bring uh, those specific decks. But, uh, yeah, I think deck or deck decision-making and deck building may be one of his weaker points, whereas his in-game decision-making uh, would be one of the stronger areas of his game. Yeah, no question about that. Now, the Death Lord is pretty devastating here against the... Uh... Against the Mech Shaman, I, I kind of feel like Shadowy has to win this game. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you if you don't win this game, it's you're in a a lot of trouble here. Though uh, there's no you know Shadow or Death in hand, and uh, if Shaoshen can maybe play this Fell Reaver without it getting cleared, could be a way uh, for him to uh, you know get a victory here. Shaoshen, like we saw in the last match, you know, doing. His best, you know, com I would say combined Tice and Life Coach impression. Tice likes to kind of bluff <laughs> like this uh, with his cards, and, you know, Life Coach obviously going with the rope every turn. So uh, I guess he wants to be on Gamers 2 right now. It's gotta be <laughs> it, yeah. Uh, do you have a, a, another one for, for uh, 
I guess are the U as well. Uh, yeah. It's it's. <laughs> but yeah, uh, very very strong, very strong players, all three here, and and and. Uh, but yeah, it definitely he kind of reminds me of like coach, thinking a lot about every single turn here. The Norsia cleric, I think it's it's gonna get so much draw. What do you think about this coin death lord here? Actually, the coin death lord could be pretty strong. Obviously, um, you know you don't really worry about the minions coming about out of the shaman too much. Typically, they're pretty small, other than the you know the fell reavers that you see. So, and and even if you get something, even if it gets earth shocked or something like that, then uh, you're fine using that you know big two seven body to kind of clear out. So, uh, yeah, pretty good uh, option here for shadowing. Chaoshan, you know, doesn't have really good options to deal with this. Uh, he can obviously clear it off with the Lava Burst, but that leaves him with two mana next turn, which is pretty painful. And uh, otherwise, maybe just develop a Spider Tank and go from there. Yeah, I mean, there's not much of an answer for the for the Fell River here. There was, I guess, an option to uh, potentially draw how, how many... Well, so many cards here with the... Uh, no share combo. He could have drawn at least three with the circle of healing. Wonder if he goes for that in the late game, but he needs to clear something. Ooh. Start with the lava burst here. What does he get out of it? Oh, he gets the rolling sap. That's not bad here. Yeah. That's really good for right now, because now you can now you put a lot of pressure on your opponent to be able to deal with this. Uh, Shadowy, he can clear actually, or. I mean, he can clear the uh, the Whirling Zapomatic by going... It's pretty expensive, though, because he ha would have to go with the uh, Wild Power Mancer into Circle of Healing into uh, Power Word Shield in that order. And uh, no cards drawn either other than the Power Word Shield. So uh, do you commit to that, or do you wait and get a bit greedy with that North Star Cleric? I think you have to wait now, yeah. <laughs> Maybe you like just heal go for the, the right, right call. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe just go for the the uh, light of Naru. Heal back to full. Get a three two on the board that can test for future turns. Mm -hmm. But I mean, then he doesn't have uh, enough damage to really clear effectively. Unless going for a a uh, circle of healing without drawing, I kind of feel like he needs to draw with the circle of healing. But Shadowy will have to show us the way here. Uh, mm, second yeah, circle this is the is interesting. This is the only play that I did. I thought was not viable. Yeah. Um, well, to be fair, Chao Shen, it's pretty painful to clear this, right? If he uh, throws in the Whirling Zapomatic twice, that's a lot of damage missed. And you're throwing away your Whirling Zapomatic, which is one of your bigger threats as well. Um, <laughs> he still can't play the Spider Tank Shao Shen, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I mean, he could play the second Whirling Zapomatic and just go all phase, but that leaves Shadowy with the ability to, uh, you know, make some fireworks happen with that Wild Pyromancer and the Circle. So, yeah, it looks like Chao Shen really just has to take this risk. Can't really, um, can't really be playing too conservative and killing off that North Star Cleric, but, yeah, gonna be a ton of cards. Let's see how he sequences this. Um, so, yeah, gonna draw one card first off of this circle, which just cycles it, which is kind of nice, but uh, what does he do after this? Looks like it's going to be... What if you just circle right now and gain five cards first before you do this? I guess yeah, not. I mean, why not? I guess... This point, I mean, very for the clear with the with the uh, Arcana, but still... Yeah, I mean, you've already just cleared this board. I don't think you... You don't really need the Arcana anymore. And in fact, with this uh, Fell Reaver coming down, I think he wanted to draw just to go deeper in your deck and maybe pick up that Shadow or Death. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has the option to draw next turn still, and also play the Shadow with Death if he gets it, but he has some options. It's definitely not uh, that one-sided. I do like this play by Chaoshin, by the way, of going for the Fell Reaver, realizing that uh, this is not a good matchup, and you really need to take a chance here and just kind of cross your fingers and hope your opponent doesn't have the Shadow or Death. It's uh, much better than playing, you know, Power Mace and doing nothing, or... I mean, and you wouldn't play the uh, the uh, spider tank here. It just kind of dies to the board as well. So going for the biggest minion possible and uh, just hoping its opponent doesn't have the answer and might get rewarded here, uh, depending on if Shadow can draw it or not. Yeah, that is true here. Um, but yeah, the Holy Champion here. I kind of like the Holy Champion myself, but the Control Priest hasn't been seen a lot in the EU meta recently. It's not not... Too bad. Yeah, control priest. He can clear, yeah. Yeah, so it looks like he's going to go for a clear using the light of the Naru. 
Um, three. Well, no, just circle. Sorry, my uh, my mistake. It had to be circle. Um, so yeah, is he able to clear that and does get board control? So I guess this makes sense in the end. Maybe a bit better than uh, trying to draw cards. I, he figures that uh, his arsenal, the priest arsenal, is good enough to clear out uh, whatever Chalcedon has to offer. And with a Cabal Shadow mm -hmm. Priest in hand, he can just steal, uh, most likely steal what Chalcedon does next turn. Yeah, I think the Spider Tank Power Mesh is going to be pretty strong, though. You can kill the Arcanayoff, have a pretty strong board against the uh, Zombie Chow. But overall, though, he's not going to face. And this is what I dislike. I dislike the Flame Tongue Totem in aggressive decks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's I think you really need the uh, uh, need more consistency in terms of that. But the Golden Celebration card back. I'm so jealous about that, actually. <laughs> Wait, which one? Uh, who's, who's card back? Uh, I believe it's Shadowy, it's the Golden Celebration. Right. Should be visible in the second here, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's only available in China and it looks looks so good. But uh Wow. But yeah, the the storyline of the day has been been really Xiaoman doing poorly. But yeah, this definitely. just seems yeah. But uh Oof. I mean he he is able to put this holy champion on the board, get a big nice big minion. Um Chao Shen, he's just running out of options, honestly. And uh, mm -hmm. I mean, he can turn this spider, make the spider take a bit bigger. He can't trade for the Holy Champion right now, but again, do you really want to be trading uh, when you really need to start killing your opponent ASAP? That is true, bro. <laughs> that totem is not the best against Shaman. Uh, against the, uh, against Priest generally, because you can get some crazy things going with the uh, North Shell. Let's leave the Holy Champion, but. I believe, yeah, the uh, the Holy Champion does get buffed to 7 attack if you attack the Tombi Chow, does it not? Oh, right, right, right. So this is pretty awkward, isn't it? Mm hmm Yeah, so you can't actually clear out this Holy Champion without cl uh, killing your own uh, Spider Tank. So maybe... I guess, yeah, this kind of is okay, but then it leaves the Zombie Chow. Or, I, I mean, kinda... he could go face as well, I suppose. I kind of would have liked him to go for the Flame Tongue Totem, trade into the Holy Champion. Uh, and then after that, right. yeah, and then play, go and for then, the... Yeah. Yeah, 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 and then play the uh, Mech Warper afterward. That kind of makes sense. Out uh, of the options, though, I think this is probably the weakest option of the... I mean, you play the Flame Tongue for two damage, and... and... Well, to be fair, it gets uh, the most damage to face, right? So <laughs> that is something. Yeah, but I mean, you, you aren't going to win... Mm -hmm. But I mean, you can top deck Doomhammer into Lava Burst. This still would be not enough in this case. Okay. In any case, Shadowy looks like he's gonna take the Flame Tongue Totem to provide him with uh, some trades here. Uh, now the yeah the Holy Champion is able to trade into this Spider Tank, which is the biggest threat at the moment. And then the Zombie Chow <laughs> takes out the Mech Warper. So uh, reasonable play, and is able to pretty much stabilize. Um, Chalshan running out of options. Obviously, this uh, Cogmaster can only do maximum three damage. And now Chalshan wondering whether or not he should maybe even concede right now. That's why he's looking at uh, the size of the decks remaining. I mean, he pretty much has to draw Doomhammer right now and then, you know, try to get even more damage out of that in the future. But, yeah, looking pretty bleak for Chalshan right now. Doom ha or, yeah. sorry, Death Lord coming out of uh, Shadowy and uh, going to just make his Light Ward a bit bigger here, even not even uh, healing his face because he knows that this Death Lord is just so hard to get around. But yeah, I felt like you know Chaosin almost threw this game away and, and gave up when he decided to not fade in and, and just drop the flame tongue and go face. I felt like that was the kind of the turning point of this game. I guess the the Wild Power Master was very important. Uh, but yeah, Chaosin just hasn't. This hasn't been working. He's looks so disappointed mm. in his play and and just in, the, in how things are going. Well, I mean, I, I think uh, there's a good chance that no matter what he did, uh, he would have lost this match anyway, uh, mm -hmm. given what had, Shadowy had in his arsenal and just the way the, these decks are comprised. I mean, typically. I mean, this is how control priests work, right? They're they're they work to be able to uh, shut down everything that the that the opponent has to offer, and uh, not really provide their own threats. Uh, control priests typically weaker against things like mid range.
decks that uh, aren't easily, you know, that don't have an easy answer to the minions. But that's going to be it for game one. Shadow is going to take the game and take a 1-0 series lead. Priest out of the way, pretty good for him. I mean, uh, in China, they kind of feel that Priest is one of the weaker classes, which is, you know, typically why you don't see the Dragon Priest as much. They just feel like no matter what you pick, it's going to be weaker. So might as well try to go for a super anti-aggro deck that uh, can pick up wins here and there. So good for Shadowy to get out of the, that out of the way, considering it could struggle uh, later on, potentially. Well, maybe not in this particular uh, this particular series because of what Chaoshin has chosen, but just overall, um, considering what decks it could face against. I have to, yeah. I kind of like like Priest currently in the meta. Uh, it's strong against the Akro Druid, strong against the Secret Paladin. And we have been seeing very, very little of both of those today. It's been mid-range Druid and, and mid range Paladin as well. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised may, too as yeah. well. Uh, it's not seeing very much aggro druid. It's a uh, it's a pretty strong deck recently. I mean, we mm -hmm. saw a lot of it at the uh, Seed Story Cup as well uh, a little while back, and uh, performed pretty well there, and performed you know pretty well on ladder. A uh, lot of strong matchups that uh, you know the mid range druid doesn't really have. Yeah, it also just it seems to be better against aggro even. Uh, Maybe it's just the Chinese meta. Maybe they haven't just caught on to the aggro through it. And that's why Priest is struggling as well. Uh, could be by effect. Uh, mm. To be fair, uh, all four of our players have played Druid thus far. And all four Druids have won. Or have picked up a win looking at my, my uh, chart here right now. So uh, that is that is a, you know, a check mark in the corner of the mid-range combo Druid. In the case, uh, yeah, Shadowy... Yeah. Sorry? I guess it's not uh, surprising at all, though, overall. To me, at least, you know, you expect the Paladin and the Druid to really win quite easily, but it's just a matter of, of, of how, how you go about it. Mm -hmm. All right. In any case, uh, we do have the Mage and the Warrior remaining for Shadowy, and we have the Shaman, Hunter, and Rogue remaining for Chaoshen. Uh, pretty cool to see uh, both these guys in the studio as well, fighting their way out. We also have uh, Tom in the studio, uh, you know, uh, being able to play on uh, the same land as these guys, so uh, kind of interesting to see. Obviously, Clento at home uh, didn't. I mean, all players were invited uh, to go to the site in order to compete, but you know, uh, kind of a hassle sometimes getting the Chinese visa. But as far as these two players that are in the same studio and just uh, builds up that pressure and builds up, you know, the tension uh, with which these guys have to play. And as you see, they're in their little boost there. Yeah, the pros are talking about a lot of history in terms of going from EU to NA or, or NA to EU or either of one of them to China. You lose at least a day traveling each way. So you lose two days, which you could be streaming or you could be casting or you could be playing in tournaments. So it's a lot to give up just to uh, attend an event. Yep. Obviously, Tom, uh, pretty close uh, living in Taiwan and also being able to speak the language as well. So uh, not as much of a sacrifice for him. We also had surrender in st surrender, excuse me, in studio yesterday. Obviously from South Korea. So, uh, Shadowy looks like his ears are maybe hurt by those uh, those uh, headsets. Come on, guys, give him a headset so don't hurt the ears. But it looks like he's fine, and uh, hopefully we can get into our next game without much issue. There we go. All right, going to be the patient warrior from Shadowy versus the uh, rogue from Chaoshan. I believe this is a pretty standard oil rogue, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it seems to be yeah, pretty run of the mill here. Uh, I guess, Patron, how do you feel like that uh, matchup goes? It's a pretty uh, tough one to call. I mean, we haven't seen this matchup too much in tournaments, um, despite you know it being at the World Championships. Uh, but typically, the players that had Patron were also the ones who were playing Rogue, like we saw with Os Kaka. Um, so, yeah, I mean, on the one hand... Uh, the difference between the old patron warrior and the new patron warrior is that, you know, there's no more burst damage. And that, I mean, typically, you know, rogue, both both of these decks are combo decks, so they kind of like to, you know, not really do too much the first few turns. And that gives the uh, patron warrior time to set up, or it gave, excuse me, the patron warrior time to set up things like the OTK uh, Frothing Berserker combos. Obviously, that's not in play anymore. But, uh, you know, they instead have kind of beefier minions with, like, Dr. Boom, which Rogue notoriously has a hard time dealing with. It has Grom, which can be a finisher as well. 
also has you know those pilot shutters which are also very annoying so um overall i mean it i think the it's kind of stayed pretty much the same uh as far as you know who has the advantage in the situation looks like chow shen doesn't realize that this is patient warrior and immediately gonna attack the face and that's gonna give shadowy potentially some battle rage value later on well yeah no question uh but look at the hands here is it even viable to go for the s side but you gotta keep the pressure up against the warrior. It's all about the sweaters and the uh, the uh, Tinker Shaw Sword Oil as well. You gotta get three minions attacking face each turn, and that's how you pull away here uh, in this matchup. But talk about the hand though. It's pretty mediocre, I feel, for both players. The Death Spider even being a bit strong. Mm -hmm. Coin out the Death Spider, that's it's not Do bad. Do you go for both Dread Corsairs here? Or are you worried about uh, Blade Flurry? I don't mind it's one of them, yeah. Yeah, one of them, one of them is obvious. I mean, I felt like one of them is uh, pretty obvious, but the second one could put a lot of pressure down, especially if uh, Chaoshan doesn't have the Blade Flurry in hand. I mean, it wouldn't be the best Blade Flurry, even, you know, compared to killing a lot of Grim Patrons mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, maybe... You, but there's no Patron in hand. Yeah. yeah, I think if he had maybe Patron in hand, he would have maybe played both to uh, bait that out. But... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, it could still be a pretty good turn for Shadow here. He could play the second Dread Corsair and the uh, the Shredder. It does put himself again into danger of getting Blade Flurried. But, um... I, mean, I think it's like just gotta be it, yeah. Like, it looks like he's just gonna hold on to it and not commit too much to the board. Uh, yeah, without that Grim... Obviously, you if you had the Grim Patient on board, you'd be happy to have your opponent Blade Flurry you, but uh, with no such cards in hand, Shadow is not gonna take that risk. Yeah, this feels almost excessive, to be honest. Uh, what? The uh, the double Corsair? Uh, I guess, no, skipping this Corsair here on, on turn oh, 4. Oh, yeah, being too safe, you mean? Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. So, yeah, getting... But is Shadowy in a, in a commanding lead here? I mean, he also has the Akla to keep on drawing, mm -hmm. so... I'm really liking his position. Uh, but Chaosin has has some some tricks up his sleeve now. He has the flurry at least. Yeah. Do you um do you maybe just throw down the acolyte here and uh, I mean that could potentially draw a flurry as well. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, I guess I don't want the acolyte. Maybe even Taskmaster. Hmm. Because I feel like the Taskmaster is the strongest card against Druid, so you might as well cycle it. Yeah, definitely. One thing that Taskmaster can do, however, is if, uh, say you have to use your, your Death Spite at some point, you know, maybe a minion comes out here and uh, you don't have the most favorable trades, and then, you know, uh, a Violet Teacher or Lothab comes after that, um, or sorry, not a Violet Teacher or Lothab, uh, sorry, uh, an Azure Drake, an Azure Drake comes after that, maybe you can use the uh, Cruel Taskmaster with that uh, Fireworks to clear it off, and that could be, you know, some extra flexibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do agree. In any case, Chelston, I mean, it's this is kind of an awkward game, right? Shadowy has had the opportunity to put more pressure on, but uh, doesn't want to extend too far into a Blade Flurry. Uh, at the same time, Chelston taking a bit of damage every turn, but nothing too, you know, pressing. So he can kind of, he kind of has the opportunity to take his time, but uh, now with all these options in hand, you know, might have to make a move here. That's true. Um, what I'm interested about is when the Atuin is going to come down and he's going to drop him right now and maybe he wants to get rid of this death mm -hmm. that's been looming over him, denying his Lothep turn after turn here. Could have gone for a 6-6 six, six or an 8-8. Eight, eight. Uh, you, you know, sometimes you see BGH in the Patreon Warrior decks, but uh, could have gone maybe, uh, you know, Farseer Prep Edwin and then, you know, Eviscerate or something like that to, you know, kind of clear up this board a bit and get a bigger Van Cleef. Uh, as it stands, mm -hmm. this Van Cleef is a bit vulnerable. And, uh, I mean, Chaoshin does have the Lothop in hand, but that's really the only substantial minion. Other than that, it's just the, uh, the Blood Mage. I don't mind this, though. I don't know. I feel like him having one Execute or... or a big Hunter is, is so likely. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can just, just attack the, uh, the Earthen Ring and, and Execute. But now we do see the uh, Akala coming down, gets armor, gets another card. We see Patron in hand now, cycles the 
Aklat, I believe. No, he kills the. Uh, okay. Does has to kill the uh, Earthen Ring. Okay. So he values the uh, Earthen Ring over a Kadra. Yeah, Leave, leaving uh, minions on board for a row can always be pretty dangerous, especially with the potential for Tinkers. I mean, maybe Chaoshin goes, you know, prep Tinkers, Flurry to the face here, and uh, and also some more damage, obviously, from that <laughs> minion. But uh, pretty good fan here from that uh, Blood Mage. We might see this Lotha potentially, considering he's, he used the prep already. But uh, yeah, a lot, lot of pressure coming out from Chaoshin. But, uh, you know, Chattery still sitting at 30 health, so I don't know if he's too worried. Might just uh, plop down this this uh, Dr. Boom. And if that is the play. Yeah, I think there's no, no reason to worry at this point. You're right. That's, that's also the... Uh, what I was thinking about in terms of the draw, instead of the... Because uh, you don't really have to fear the oil in, unless you're at around 17 uh, health, health range. But now, to have the kill on the uh, Dr. Boom... Gonna see the uh, potential for Thalnos. What about just hitting Thalnos first? Actually, it wouldn't matter the mm -hmm. spell damage. I, he wanted to, for... um, yeah. He he wanted, or I mean, training spells first before the uh, eviscerate. You mean? Yeah, yeah. Be backstab, then train Thalnos, then you have the option to eviscerate after you see what you get from the Thalnos. I guess it's but... pretty unlikely that you wouldn't eviscerate there anyway. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. Oh yeah, it's just true. It's the same same. You know. I guess it's the same idea behind it being pretty unlikely you get, oh, wow. getting a doom share of a powder sweater or, or a you know uh, a dire wolf or, or a flame tongue out of a powder sweater, but you always play around it anyway, I feel. Yeah, yeah but Chaoshan with uh, pretty bad luck there, his loath of dies to the boom butt, which is uh, obviously not what you want to see there. And uh, wasn't even in attacked into by the boom butts, you know, attacked with uh, different minions into it. And nonetheless, both of them hit and they ended up killing it. <clears throat> Shadowy with a bit of an interesting situation here. Both both uh, players with, um, you know, kind of utility pieces, but not real, uh, not any real use for them. I mean, obviously Chaoshin can just plop down this this heal bot, uh, and Shadowy can also just uh, throw down this uh, Dread Corsair, but uh, going to be floating a decent amount of mana for both players, and nothing really to do, uh, because, you know, committing too much to the board would uh, kind of be suicide. That's true here. Um, and we have the heal bot option. I'm kind of, yeah. Uh, Shadowy just seems to be pulling further and further ahead of that. That initial loath of turn seemed to be his chance to get back into this, but now with two flurries, the heal bot, it's just not looking good. I mean, maybe if, if Shadowy just keeps on drawing that here, but I feel like it kind of goes back to the turn where. He didn't go for the uh, Taskmaster on the Acolyte. He could have had an extra card here, Shadowy. Yeah, I mean, it, it does... Uh, he could have had an extra card, but at the same time, um, you're kind of killing a card of your opponent. So it, it, I can kind of get behind um, him kind of playing a bit conservative here. Uh, but yeah, this game is just kind of back and forth, it seems. Shadowy, obviously, with the ability to keep armoring up to get out of range, which is a, a bit of a big deal. Chao Shen here, I mean, imagine his play is just simply to play the uh, heal bot, uh, re-dagger, and deadly poison. Um, but uh, he seems to be kind of taking his time with it. Looks like there's going to be a play. I don't see any reason not to play. I mean, I guess you don't want your, your heal bot to die to the fire war X, but it's kind of hard to avoid that fate, <laughs> right? You'd have to uh, pick up something bigger first, and then have the time to play that, and then have the time to play the heal bot at some other point. So, yeah, I might as well just play it out right now. Mm hmm Yeah. Alright, so Shadowy is uh, in an interesting position. He can kind of go all in, so to speak, uh, by using, you know, his patron uh, Acolyte Whirlwind, or maybe he can commit to the, uh, the Unstable Gold to the board as well, but obviously that's really bad against something like Blaine Flurry. Uh, looks like it's going to be kind of an in-between play, just... Uh, Acolyte, Unstable Goal, Re-Equip an Axe, and Hero Power. And that's going to be it. Guess he's really uh, uh, trying to pay out that flurry so he can drop the uh, patron to follow that up with, but is it now time to flurry? I'm not sure it is. I mean, you have the second flurry. I mean, obviously, I think, well, 
I was gonna say you obviously draw the or obviously drop the Azure Drake first, but maybe not uh, because you don't want that extra damage considering the fireworks. So gonna be played afterward to mm -hmm. uh, avoid the um, avoid the death rattle. Chaoshen now. Well, this is a, this is game has become just you know a, a slugfest, right? Uh, really, who has the advantage here? Um, Chadow, we we know that if he goes all in right here and goes for uh, four patrons plus a, a buffed up, uh, potentially buffed up, um, you know, frothing berserker. That there is really no answer in Chaoshen's hand right now, but you know, it kind of depends a bit on how far ahead it's, he thinks he is. I feel like you have to go for it now, honestly. Yeah, I mean, you have nothing else in hand, so the fact that everything is pointing to you doing that, maybe you just take that chance right here. I mean, if you draw something like Gromash or, or, or some like a minion, you know, that, that's great, but it, you need the man also to play it, so I feel like it's going to come down to that mm. execute, really. Yeah, going to use the execute instead of using his health. A bit worried about his um, health. He's not going to whirlwind, really? Yeah, this is this seems like it's a bit too conservative. Um Chao Shen Yeah. He does pick up the eviscerate, but uh unfortunately he doesn't really have yeah. to, doesn't really have anything to pair with it. Uh playing the Violet Teacher to you know activate the combo would just put a one one on the board to uh activate more uh Grim Patrons. If you sap, you obviously give that back to your opponent. If you blade flurry, you're just making the the problem really bad. Uh, you could just eviscerate onto the three two, but this is looking pretty. This is like a just annoying situation for Chaoshan right now. I kind of like just going for the shot and the eviscerate here, dropping after dropping the uh, the wild teacher. Mm. I mean, you only have to deal with one, and and thinking that he'll have more activators is just not that likely. But hmm. seems uh, Chaoshan seems seems to disagree here. And he is going to get punished for that, it seems. Uh, no, this has to be the turn that he goes for it. Yeah, and especially with that battle rage. Wow. Oh, that's do, do, you you go for, do you go for the entire thing? You go for the uh, the Frothing Berserker, Whirlwind, and Battle Rage? No question. No question at all here. This is going to turn into the, turn the game around. Yeah, I think Shadow would just run away with this one. Yeah, at this point you can't really um, assume that your opponent has uh, is holding back that flurry because that's just way too dangerous to leave these guys on the board. So yeah, gonna be the uh, battle rage for four cards, and uh, picks up a slam, which is which allows him to kill this uh, valet teacher. And uh, I imagine he's gonna hold on to that inner rage. And Chaosin is not happy at all. Six is at all with this. Battle Rage here, uh, can't blame him. What about the one in the race? Is that, a, that an option even? Wow, oh, Shadowy is playing super conservative with his health total. I don't think there's any way for Chaoshin to kill him. I mean, Salsi Deccan, Tinker Sinker's Flurry maybe? Uh, that, uh, but even you, you would need a prep to enable that. But um, yeah, this looks like it's going to be it. Shadowy has, you know, 14 damage in hand. So uh, I don't see Chaoshin getting out of this one. Yeah, not really, especially with the weapon on top of it. There's nothing he can do, so Shadow is going to go up 2-0 here in this fourth series of the day. Yep, we're just seeing uh, if Chao Shen... I mean, can Chao Shen uh, prevent lethal on board? I mean, he can, kind of. He can uh, sap and eviscerate and, uh, you know, it doesn't really have the answer for the other two patrons, though, so... Yeah, I mean, he, Chao Shen can survive on board, he's just kind of wondering what's the best option here. What is it? Just so theoretically, I, I suppose, in Chao Shen's position, what, what is the best option here, uh, assuming that your opponent just has a garbage hand? I think sapping one of the patrons... No, sapping the frothing, killing one of the patrons, then dropping the mm. violet, I think. I don't think dropping the violet teacher first is a good idea, though. Kind of just yeah, I have to your, agree with you there, yeah. Your opponent's uh, patron board. But, well, I get uh, this apple's coming down. It would have to be on the, uh, on the, frothing, not the, mm -hmm. patron. But, in my yep. opinion, that's going to be it. Though, uh, like I said earlier, fourteen damage out of hand, which is pretty crazy considering uh, there's no more war song in this deck. But uh, that's going to do it, Shadowy, or at least for this game. Uh, Shadowy is going to take a two games to zero lead. 
And yeah, pretty dominant performance so far. Uh, Changshan, the cult hero, the cult favorite among Chinese audiences, uh, in a lot of trouble right now. I think the thing to mention though is he is playing the Agro Freeze Mage, and this is Conquest, so there's the potential for mm. for uh, Chaosin to just to come back and, and reverse sweep here, just like Colento did last series. And people have been saving the weakest uh, the weakest deck mm. for last, so that may come and bite him here. Right. Yeah, but and in any case, Chaosin's gonna need to come back. Uh, he lost his first series one three to Tom. And, you know, a, a loss here, you know, 0-3 or 1-3 would basically just doom him. I, he would have to rely on two players uh, finishing 1-2. and two, two other players, excuse me, finishing 1-2. and two. And on top of that, uh, he would, you know, have to probably 3-0 his last series. So, Chao Shen's going to almost certainly need a comeback in this situation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he was looking so solid, though. It's kind of sad to see him here in a lot of trouble. Mm. Overall, the Roaring Torch. It's kind of funny to see an aggro deck with Frost Nova, but that's the <laughs> yeah, that reality looks, we're living at. That yeah. looks like a normal Freeze Mage hand, right? But uh, not going to be the case as we see the Mad Bomber come out. Um, I actually, you know what? Uh, this is kind of embarrassing. Why is the Mad Bomber in the deck? I've, I've played against this on ladder, and, I've see, and when I see the Mad Bomber, I'm like, oh, it's this deck. But uh, do you know the reason why? I have no idea. I don't agree with Mad Bomber at all. <laughs> Just to get some random extra damage to your opponent's face. Yeah, but what do I know? You know, this is just chaos. <laughs> like there's a certain type of people that would actually play this type of deck. You just know? random cards. Uh, Shadowy might be uh, trying to disguise the type of deck here by playing uh, the Loot Hoarder first, making it seem like it's going to be uh, Phrase Mage. Uh, turn 2 Loot Hoarder into turn 3 Arcane Int. Like, we'll sell that. Um, but... Uh, I mean, if Chao Shen thinks this is Freeze Mage, he, he, he's pretty happy right now uh, because of that uh, that Assassin's Blade in hand. Oh yeah, Rogue have been taking in uh, a lot of strong cards against Freeze Mage right now. So, not the worst matchup, but <laughs> we're going to see the Mad Bomber come down. Are we though? We, we might see the uh, the Arcane Intellect instead. As we see the Iceland, this is so crazy. <laughs> At the Snow Chuck, just uh, <laughs> so many random disparate cards in the... Uh, in Shadowy's hand right now. It's, uh, this is absolutely amazing. Um, have you played this this deck on ladder? I mean, I assume you've played against it, but have you actually used it? I haven't. I've got to be honest. I've played against it a ton, and you always feel like silly when you lose to it. <laughs> Every single but time. Like, how did they lose all, that also, deck? Also, like, feels so easy when you beat it, you know? Yeah, it's like, oh, was that it? What was that? What were they doing? Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, it looks like... Okay, it's going to be... A, a snow chug and let's look at Chao Shen's face. <laughs> He's not, it's his hand kind of fell for a second. He's completely baffled. He's yeah. <laughs> this is actually one of the funniest reactions I've seen. He's like, wait a second, what? I thought I was playing against Freeze Mage. <laughs> this is really funny. He doesn't know what to do. He's he's absolutely confused. <laughs> just leaning back in his chair thinking he's just thinking what could this deck possibly be is it that stupid aggro deck that I faced on the ladder the other day but uh, yeah okay it's gonna be just an Arthuring Farce here to uh, heal himself back up and uh, obviously guys we're, we're just joking I mean this is a very effective deck uh, that's you know has performed pretty well on ladder and uh, we just like calling it stupid just because it's, it's just funny but uh, yeah, going to be freezing the face, a mad bomb, we're going to hit the field, some random bombs. Uh, not too impactful, although that does prevent a clean trade onto the snow chugga from the earthen ring forest here. But, um, I'm going to go ahead and just call it stupid, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this deck works, but it just seems to work for some reason, and it's it's really frustrating <laughs> to play against. But uh, I don't even know what you go for here. Yeah, can he really spare the... the yeah, I, I kind of like this. Just going for the solid minion that uh, you know trades with both of the minions on board. Uh, Shadowy, do you burn a frost over here? I imagine you don't. Uh, yeah, gonna go for the arcane intellect and uh, mm -hmm. probably the loot hoarder as well. And a lot of damage in the hand of Shadowy at the moment. Yeah, I mean, I think you just forget sometimes you can actually ice launch after attacking with the frost uh, with the snow chugger. That's a lot of damage. 
six damage just right there. Uh, so we're looking at fan plus flurry, really? Is that? I, I think or, he's gonna or, go for the just gotta go for the flurry right now. Oil, it seems like. oil, oil, the flurry, like. Yeah, looks like it's gonna be oil flurry, I believe, um, because you can't really attack your battle teacher into that snow chugga because you don't want to get it frozen, obviously, for future turns, um, mm -hmm. and kind of everything else is a bit uh, subpar. So I wouldn't mind going with the the tinker's flurry right now, um, especially because yeah. I mean, if you know this deck, you know that it runs a lot of spells, and um, you know it even sometimes runs cold light oracles. So uh, it, you maybe maybe your hand will get refilled, and you might draw another flurry anyway. But joking aside, though, if you look at this deck, I mean, he Chaosin has a heal bot. Wow! Hits the has the violet teacher. That's really good for him. Sorry, go ahead. Always lucky, but yeah, he has the heal bot. He has the assassinate plate. This is looking hard for Shadowy to come back from, honestly. Right. Is there a doomsayer in this? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the exact. Some people list, maybe. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a Frost Nova and a Forgotten Torch to face. Um, I think Shadow is going to be looking for some uh, either Arcane Intellect or Colette Oracle in the near future. But um, Shadowy, I don't think he needs to uh, heal bot quite yet. I don't think on seven mana you're really capable of dying here from nineteen. So could be just an Assassin's Blade and, and attack the face here. I mean, Frostbolt, and he's almost got it, you know. I know, That's right? the thing. <laughs> uh, that, that is true. That would be, you know, 11 damage. Pretty, more or less, out of nowhere. Although, uh, even more with the Thanos. Um... That's the silliness of this, this deck, you know. Like, oh, there's the Colette so Oracle. Far ahead, but... There is the Colette Oracle. That's uh, essentially what he's looking for. Uh, you do give the, the Rogue more options and maybe allow him to draw into healing. Obviously, we know that the, uh, the uh, heal bot is already in the hand, but... Uh, I imagine he kind of has to go for that Colette Oracle right now and maybe play the uh, Ice Block as well. Yeah, for or... no question. You need the Frost Bolt desperately uh, or something to freeze here. Or do you have you the Ice Block just, here. Uh, or you could just go maybe Thanos and burn the face once and then hopefully you draw the Frost Bolt afterward. And that Thanos will draw you card as well. You're taking so much damage though and you don't have. You don't really have the, uh, the Ice Block up. I feel like that's. Yeah, you gotta play to win. Hope he draws nothing at all, and hope you draw everything you need. I mean, this far behind. So there's a Blinktron coming into hand. We, I saw that earlier, and I wasn't uh, sure if that's standard. I don't think, I don't believe it is. No, it can't be standard. You never know, though, with this this deck. But well, Chao Shan has more options in hand. Um, I don't think he's quite uh, afraid enough to go for the heal, but especially seeing the fireball onto his Violet Teacher. So we could see him get a bit aggressive and just play maybe double um, double um, SI7 agent here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of like that. I guess he wish he had one more mana though to really go for this complete low step is what he needed. Yeah, That's... low step is absolutely huge. I'm gonna forgo one damage here to keep uh, one of his one ones on the board, and uh, yeah, Shadowy in a bit of trouble here. Really needs to. I don't even. Not really sure. Just uh, just trying to find a way to, um, you know, I guess pick up damage, and he does pick up the damage. So now maybe he's regretting, you know, fireballing that Violet Teacher, Violet teacher a turn earlier. Uh, he would have had a lot of damage to go to face uh, if that were not the case. Plus, obviously, the ice block in hand. Mm hmm. I can deal 11 now and maybe hope for Doomham next time, but he doesn't. Does freeze the weapon then? Is that maybe what he has to go for? Hope that there's nothing, no low step, no direct damage. Mm. Like maybe even just blink to an ice block, is that it? Hope for yeah. a frostbolt. Yeah, maybe that might be his best uh, option, right? Maybe you, you blink trying to hopefully get something like a doom hammer. Uh, maybe an Agorhal, which is a, just a one-off seven damage. Uh, Arcanite Reaper potentially, and yeah. uh, just go from there. I think yeah, that could be a good your best option. Go for the blink tron into the ice block. Instead, it's going to be a mana worm ice block uh, fireball. Going to put a little bit of pressure on a Chaoshen, and. Um, yeah, let's see how Chaosin responds to this. Likely going to be seeing that uh, Healbot come out, and uh, that could be the beginning of the end for Shadowy in this game. 
Although he could go for Lothab as well, I suppose. That is true, yeah. Uh, I've got to admit that I kind of prefer Lothab because it also puts pressure onto your opponent. Uh, right. But I want, I want to see the, uh, the SI as well. The biggest problem here is that he cannot clear the Mana Worm and pop the Ice Block, which is obviously annoying. But uh looks like he's going to favor popping the block. I, I think I agree with this, just because um, it makes it the most difficult for Shadowy from here on out. And he needs lethal right now uh, through a Loth Hub somehow, or mm -hmm. you know he's going to be on his way out. That is true, yeah. Uh, so what can he realistically top deck here? I'm not really sure. I mean, just off the top of my head, I mean, you think of something like Frost Nova plus Ice Lens of Face, but with a Loth Hub, that's just basically impossible. Um, I mean, you can't use any spells. Uh, the Blink Tron, even the Gorha wouldn't be enough. He's running Owl, though. Wow, he doesn't want to show anything. Yeah. Well, that's it's going a strong to be, move, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be game four, Chalice, and picks up a win with this Rogue. Uh, able to navigate that crazy matchup against, uh, what are we calling this? The Aggro Freeze Mage? Yeah. The Aggro Freeze Mage, and uh, it'll be up to Chalice to be able to take a match with his, or, or take the match with his Shaman and Hunter remaining, where a Shadow will be, Shadow, excuse me, will be trying to find a win with his Mage. It's true here, but I think it's even possible that we'll see a repeat of the last series here. So, deck that he has left, I believe it's the, uh, I believe it's the Shaman, right, that he has left, uh, Chaoshin? Yeah, Chaoshin has two decks remaining. It's going to be, um, Face Hunter and uh, the Shaman uh, and the Mech Shaman as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, this again, we haven't. I mean, obviously, this is a relatively new deck coming out of Shadowy. Uh, we faced it on ladder, but we haven't uh, actually gone over every single. We don't have the statistics for every single matchup. And uh, we're basically down to basically theory crafting. So, uh, what, does, uh, what does the matchup look like for the Face Hunter versus the Aggro Freeze Mage? I would have thought that uh, the face end would be a favorite because it has fewer dead cards. Mm -hmm. or something like the trap might even be decent, where it's, it's weak against most of the mages here. Uh, Staff for Shadowy is not bad though. Right, is he right. keeping quick shot? I think uh, I wouldn't keep quick shot over him. Yeah, he might be a bit afraid of that snow chugga uh, being able to continually. Uh, freeze his face, which could be a problem. So, gonna go ahead and keep that uh, quick shot and hope that he draws into more minions. Unfortunately, that's not the case. And uh, let's see how this plays out. Shadowy with that turn one Leopard Gnome. Chao Shen, not the card he wants to see, obviously, because he cannot, you know, coin into that, uh, into that Knife Juggler. Might be just seeing a turn one Abusive Sergeant to uh, force a ping out of his opponent, potentially. I guess I may have jinxed Xiaoshen here. I was talking about there being more dead draws here in, in the mage deck, but Xiaoshen seems to have located every single dead draw. Has the trap, has the kill command, and has the quick shot as well. I mean, the quick shot might come in handy later on, but yeah, currently it, it's not looking too good for Xiaoshen. Second Iceland, though, it's something you need in the late game, not in the early game. And Xiaoshen will be dropped down the chugger immediately, not afraid of the uh, abuse there. Or the bow, even. Mm -hmm. Which isn't in, in Xiaoshan's hand, but... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, Shadowy is going to clear there, though. A bit afraid of potentially something like Glaive Zuka, which would have uh, been pretty difficult to deal with. Xiaoshan now with a decision either to develop his own Knife Juggler or to... Uh, or to use the quick shot on the Snow Chugga. He might eventually have to do so regardless. Just because I don't really see Shadowy ever trading his Snow Chugger into the Night Juggler. One of the few times that a 2-drop uh, for your side is more valuable than a Night Juggler. Oh yeah. Uh, but overall though, it depends a lot on what Shadowy gets. I feel like something like a Cold Oracle will be just completely dead here. Ice Launch, you need that later on. So okay, let's let's say that he just goes for the quick shot. Okay, he goes for the quick shot. Yeah. Going for nothing on turn three is just so weak. I mean, only drawing is what I'm saying oh, in the Nagro wow. matchup. 
I'm gonna play the Cold Oracle. Oracle instead of the uh, instead of the Arcane Intellect, which I guess makes sense. You do develop something on the board, and um, strangely enough, I mean the Hunter is gonna be, you know, stuck for mana rather uh, than you know cards in the situation, which is the opposite of what you normally see. But uh, yeah, every single point of matter. A point of mana matters, and getting a, a minion onto the field to be able to contest is nice. Though Chao Shen with that Liu Zuka able to clear up pretty nicely, and now Chao Shen has board control. Yeah, I feel like uh, Chao Shen was kind of implying that he had a bad hand going for abusive sergeant on turn one with the coin, going for quickshot on turn two. So giving him more cards just seems so wrong. Mm -hmm. So I want to go ahead and even call. Shadowy's turn three a misplay, going for the Oracle over the uh, over the Arcane Intellect, giving Chaoshin a comeback, but he gets a second to unleash the Hounds. This is just unfair. I feel bad for him. I mean, it may be correct now even to go for the Arc. <laughs> Maybe something like I don't even know. What what can he do here, Chaoshin? Yeah, I think the only two options obviously are going to be either uh, Explosive Trap and Hero Power or Arcane Golem. And uh, just go to the phase there. Uh, in the end, I think you maybe just want to be mana efficient and go for mm. that explosive trap. And uh, I mean, not only are you floating a mana with the Arcane Golem, but you're giving your opponent a mana. Uh, I mean, he could potentially, you know, frostbolt it and then play a three drop, which is obviously pretty annoying. So I imagine we're. Oh, just kidding. He looks like he's going to go to Arcane Golem. Wants to get pressure onto the field and make his opponent respond. But I wouldn't be opposed to the explosive trap, especially because it's going to be effective almost no matter what against the minions in Shadowy's deck. But uh, yeah, going to be Shadow going to be just putting out this man worm and this loot hoarder uh, complement of the extra mana that he got from that uh, arcane golem. And uh, now Chao Shen has a bit of a decision whether or not to keep, you know, continuing to attack the face or to deal with these minions. Uh, he can also both, both, I guess, yeah, with the unleash. But maybe don't, maybe wants to get one of those out this early on. I mean, he could, yeah, clearly both of them go face with the uh, arcane golem. That's what I like. Most in this situation here, I think overall though Chao is looking better in the race mm -hmm. as there's no frostbolt and and his hero power does two damage whereas Shadow is only does one damage. But you want to get the weapon away because you probably have more weapons. And if we know Chao is correctly, he's probably going to draw them as he keeps drawing everything he doesn't need. But the armor companion at least is good and he's got two kill commands to go with that. But he needs sustained damage though, and, and even though kill command is amazing, you get six from, six from the bow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bow would be really nice for him to draw here. Shadowy has so many cards in hand considering the type of deck he's playing. Uh, obviously there's a lot of draw in there, but uh, just, you know, considering he's an aggressive deck, so kind of crazy to see uh, so many cards in hand. Goes for the Frostbolt, even though... Was that a mistake? Was that a misclick? Yeah, he did look up, uh, kind of think, you know, making it seem like, oh, what am I doing? Uh, with that play, but it has to just be wrong. I mean, he has two ice lances. Yeah, why go face there? It's like a lot why of uh, miss damage, obviously. You know, potentially I mean, four miss damage there. Yeah. Like killing the uh, arcane golem seems strong, but I mean, every every game will matter here. I mean, Tom must be smiling to himself in terms of the possibility of him getting through, because this goes to game five again. You know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Tom, you know, in that situation where he's at one on one, and um, you know, every single game matters. And you know, seeing Shadowy and Chao Shen in this kind of a this dog fight here with you know, Chao Shen maybe going down would improve his odds. Though there's a lot of damage in Shadowy's hand, and uh, I believe that that's the only secret in the deck is Ice Block. So, I mean, we've been talking about how. You know, Shadow has been a bit of trouble and maybe made a couple misplays here and there, but uh, this could be really bad for Chaoshan, maybe. How much... Okay, it looks like yeah. it's going to be the Ice Block coming out, but um, is that the Roaring Torch? If that's the Roaring Torch, that is... It clean. is, yeah. It is the Roaring Torch. Um, wait, no. Uh, actually, since he put up uh, Explosive Trap, uh, Shadow cannot attack in, so... But uh, 612, then plus the... It's, it's lethal. Ice... Yeah, that is lethal. Shadow wow. takes it. So Shadow he ends up taking it in the end. Oh, just like we said, right? This deck, it uh, looks like it's losing, looks like it's gonna just do perform horribly, and then it just pulls out a win out of nowhere. 
Oh my goodness, that's actually insane. We were talking about how Chaoshan was looking great, but uh, Shadow is gonna pull it out with the crazy aggro freeze mage. Three games to one goes to Shadowy. Wow. All right. Weird series, yeah. We, I I was expecting to go to game five at least with that freeze uh, aggro mage, but <laughs> it was I mean Shadowy just proved proved me wrong and 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 takes it three to. <laughs> I mean, you were you were yeah. correct in in uh, calling the deck and uh, describing the deck, right? Uh, it just doesn't look like it's gonna win until it just does, and <laughs> you saw it right there. We were the hunter was looking amazing the entire time, even looking at both hands. But uh, yeah, that's that's basically how the deck works, guys. It's just it's so so much craziness, and it ends up working in the end a lot of the time. In any case, it's going to be uh, one and one for shadowing. He is actually plus one on the day in games overall. So yeah, one and one for Shadowy. Chao Shen is 0 and 2. Very disappointing day for him thus far. Uh, Tom is also one and one with a minus one score overall today. And uh, Kalento being 2 and 0. So obviously Kalento in the driver's seat and a dogfight for the second place between Tom and Shadowy. Next we're going to be seeing Kalento versus Chao Shen uh, in... A matchup of basically the geniuses of their respective regions. You don't want to miss that, so stick around, guys. We'll be uh, casting that game after this.